Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll walk through the installation of Authentic both with Docker Compose and Kubernetes also referred to as K8S. This video is brought to you in collaboration with Authentic Security Inc. Before continuing this video assumes that you already have a Linux machine or server up and running. For instance, a fresh installation of Ubuntu Server is the distro of choice in this video. The documentation on Authentic's website assumes that you already have Docker and Docker Compose, or Kubernetes and Helm, installed as the requirements for Authentic's method of installation, respectively. If you have these requirements, please feel free to skip ahead in the video, as I will be going over these installations for those that don't meet the requirements. I'll start off with the Docker Compose installation. Also, Launch your choice of SSH client and connect to your Linux box, as we will be doing plenty of copy and pasting of commands. As you can see, the requirements call for Docker and Docker Compose, so let's first install these. I have several tabs open to the resources we'll be using, and these will all be linked in the description below. On the Docker tab, scroll down to the installation methods. Four methods are listed, the first being through Docker Desktop, the next being through Docker's app repository, installing it manually, and the convenient script. I won't be using Docker Desktop as my Linux box is headless and so not running a desktop interface. And I won't be installing it manually then having to deal with upgrades manually. Nor will I use the convenience script as it is recommended for testing and development purposes. Leaving with the Docker app repository method. Pull up your SSH terminal and we will start to copy and paste these commands one at a time to set up Docker's app repository. This part that starts with echo is a multi-line command denoted by the backslash, so be sure to copy and paste the following indented lines in their entirety. Step 2 is to install the Docker packages. Again, copy and paste the command into the terminal window. It prompts that additional disk space will be used. Type the letter Y and hit enter to continue. Step 3 is to verify the installation was successful by copying the command into the terminal window and if successful, the Hello World container will be pulled down, spun up, and display its success. The message display confirms the installation is working correctly. The next part is a tip and not required. However, I don't want to have to type sudo for every docker command, so we will continue to the Linux post install. and perform a few more copy and paste commands that will add our user to the Docker group. Instead of logging back out and back in for the next step to reevaluate the membership, we'll copy and paste the command provided here. And run the command for the Hello World container once more this time without sudo. Sure enough, it worked. Now I will click over to the Install Docker Compose tab. Scroll down and choose the Linux tab. Just like before, we'll copy and paste the following commands into our terminal, hitting enter after each. The first command is to download the current stable release. Then, apply permissions to the binary. And finally, test the installation and confirm that we received an appropriate version when queried. Which we did. We'll hop back over to the Authentic Documentation tab, and we now meet Authentic's requirements to install via Docker Compose. This next part is optional, however, I like to have my containers compose files in their own directories, so I'll enter this make directory command to make my preferred directory structure.
and change directory into it. From here, we'll proceed to do more copy and pasting of commands from Authentic's documentation page. So, copy and paste the wget command to the terminal and hit enter to download Authentic's Docker Compose file. Next, do the same copy and paste for the installation of the password generator binary. And continue this process with the two echo commands that will run the password generator and output the generated value into our .env or environment file. If we run a list all command, we will see our Docker Compose file and a newly created .env file. If we nano the .env, we will see our generated values. Control X to exit. I won't be doing it, however, if you'd like, you can run this next command to append error reporting to the environment file. Scroll down a little further, and you can copy and paste the following email configuration block into your environment file via nano. If you're running your own email servers, this should be straightforward by entering your host, ports, username, password, encryption method, and email address. Be aware that if you're using a third-party email provider like Gmail with two-factor authentication, you may not be able to use your main password directly, and instead will require going to your Google account's two-step verification section and generate an app password to use instead. Let me nano into the Docker Compose file and explain really quick how the .env file works. Basically, any of these entries with the dollar sign and curly brackets are variables that link back to the actual value found in the environment file which is typically located in the same directory as the Docker Compose file. This makes it so that the sensitive data is not directly found in your Docker Compose file, which are freely shared to set up environments. Let me go ahead and close out of this and get back to the authentic documentation page. Scroll down a little further. By default, authentic listens internally on ports 9000 for HTTP and 9443 for HTTPS. You can copy these entries to your environment file if you need to change them to 80 and 443 respectively. This depends mostly if you have a reverse proxy routing traffic or if the host will be accessed directly from the internet. Now that we have both our Docker Compose file and environment file, we can copy, paste, and run the Docker Compose up D command to pull our container images and spin them up. It looks to all be done. If we run the command docker ps, we can see all our containers for authentic. Notice our access ports on the authentic server container. Up in the documentation, it refers us to the address to navigate to for the initial setup. If you open a new tab and just enter the host IP address and port, you'll be greeted with the authentic login page. But we want the setup page, so be sure to add the port number forward slash if forward slash flow forward slash initial dash setup and a trailing slash to the host IP address. Or enter that same trailing info at the end of the domain address if you have a registered domain and created a DNS entry, as well as created a proxy host in your reverse proxy. Since I have a domain name, DNS record, and reverse proxy, I will open up a new tab and type the initial setup address per the documentation. And hit enter. As expected, the initial setup page loaded. Now I'll register my email and a password and click continue. And I'm now logged in. Clicking on Admin Interface, I can now go about configuring anything else I want or need. Now onto Authentics installation via Kubernetes Helm chart. The requirements per the documentation are Kubernetes and Helm. Since this is a fresh Ubuntu install, I will first sudo apt update dash y the repositories and sudo apt upgrade dash y any packages. Before moving on, I'll clear my terminal. I have several tabbed resources that I'll be using, which again will be linked in the description below. 
Bare Metal Kubernetes, aka K8S, can be intimidating to install, so I found this great site that simplifies the process with one command. The site is curl, with a K, dot sh. It is titled as an open source Kubernetes installer. Scrolling down, you can see the add-ons you can select to be part of the installation, as well as the YAML file being generated on the right side. I'll keep the default add-on selected and click to copy the URL command underneath the YAML file. Next, I'll jump back to my SSH terminal and paste the command I just copied, hit enter, and wait while it does its thing. If prompted to disable swap, type Y and hit enter to continue. All right, all done with the Kubernetes installation. Jumping back to Authentics documentation, we now need Helm. I'll jump to my Helm resource tab and scroll to the installation from script section. Next, copy and paste each line into the terminal window, hitting enter after each line. Bare metal installations of Kubernetes do not have network load balancers available by default to easily expose pods externally. Minikube does, but it is a single node, lightweight version of Kubernetes meant for local development and testing. Setting up a load balancer manually can be complicated. However, I found another resource site that simplifies it. Jumping to the tab, it is Metal Load Balancer or Metal LB. Scrolling down, we'll be using installation by manifest. So, we'll copy and paste that command into the terminal and hit enter. Then, we'll jump to the configuration page as we need to define the IPs to assign to the load balancer services. So, let's copy what they have here and this time we'll paste it into Notepad so we can easily edit it. This video is just a demonstration and so I only need one IP address and I have defined it with slash 32 CIDR notation. Adjust the CIDR notation or IP range to suit your needs as shown in their example. Select all and copy your edit. Jump back to the terminal and nano a new YAML file. I'll call mine first-pool.yaml and paste what we copied. Press Ctrl X, Y to save and hit enter to close. Now we need to announce the service IPs with a layer 2 configuration. Scroll down and copy the third configuration that has IP address pools named first-pool underneath it referring to the configuration we previously created. Jump back to terminal and nano a new YAML file. I'll call mine l2advertisement.yaml and paste what we copied. Again, press Ctrl X, Y to save, and enter to close. If we run the ls command, we'll see all the configuration files we just created. We now have to apply them with the command kubectl apply dash f to specify a file and the file name first dash pool dot yaml. And do the same for the l2 advertisement dot yaml file. Next, let's jump back to Authentics documentation. Clear the terminal. We now need to install the password generator by typing the command sudo apt install pwgen y. I'll clear my terminal again. Then copy the content of the values.yaml file from the documentation, and for me, I'll paste it into Notepad once more for easy editing. Generate a password by copying the command from the documentation into the terminal and hitting enter. Copy the password generated and go back to Notepad and replace the two locations that read this is not a secure password for the PostgreSQL password fields. Now, copy the open SSL command from the documentation and 
paste that into the terminal and hit enter. Copy the generated value and go back to notepad and replace the location that reads please generate a 50 char key for the secret field. In that same notepad, be sure to select only one ingress class name and delete the others. I'll stick with nginx and change the host to your host domain name. Next, select all and copy. Jump back to the terminal and nano values.yaml to create the configuration file. Paste what we just copied and press Ctrl X, Y to save, and hit enter to close. Scroll down in the documentation so we can install the authentic Helm chart. Just as before, we'll copy, paste, and hit enter for each of these command lines. Authentic status now shows as deployed. And if we type kubectl get pods, we see our pods slash containers and their status. Typing the same command with a dash o wide at the end gives a little more info on the pods. Just continue to run this command every so often until we see all pods one for one ready and status as running. If we type kubectl get services dash o wide, we will see all our running services and their cluster IP addresses and ports. Cluster IP addresses are only accessible within the cluster. Note there are no external IPs. This is where the load balancer service help expose cluster IPs externally. We need to create a new service of type load balancer, and I already have the config file created in my notepad, ready to copy and paste. Notice the selector has an app label of authentic. All pods with this label will automatically be able to use this load balancer to allow external access. So we will first need to be sure our authentic server pod has this label. Jump back to the terminal and we'll add this label by typing in the command kubectl label pod and copy and paste the exact name of the server pod space app equal authentic and hit enter. Now copy that whole load balancer config from notepad. In terminal nano authentic dash service dot yaml and paste what we just copied. Press control x y to save and hit enter to close. Next, we need to apply the configuration with the command kubectl apply-f authentic-service.yaml and hit enter. If we run the kubectl get services-o wide command, we'll see our new load balancer service with an external IP, which is now routing traffic to our authentic server pod. We can verify this by opening up a new browser tab and typing the host IP address and port number, which leads us to Authentic's login page. However, this is not what we want yet. If we jump back to Authentic's documentation, under the section Accessing Authentic, we see the URL we need to navigate to. It is our ingress host name, forward slash if, forward slash flow, forward slash initial dash setup, with a trailing slash. We define the ingress host in our values.yaml configuration file. Also, at this portion of the documentation, underneath the Accessing Authentic section, there is an optional step to configure global email settings. You would just need to append this block to the values.yaml configuration file with your specific settings. The same disclaimers apply that were mentioned in the Docker Compose installation portion of this video regarding self-hosted email versus third parties like Gmail. Anyways, as long as you have a DNS record at your domain's registrar and a valid entry in your reverse proxy to proxy back to your authentic host, you should be able to open a new tab and enter the correct URL address and load the initial setup page which we successfully did. Next, I will register my email and a password. And click continue. I have now successfully logged in. Finally, I can click on admin interface and configure all the things. But I'll just log out for now. You're still here? Okay, well then, I have a bonus for you. Kubernetes install of Authentic still needs the requirement of Kubernetes itself and Helm. However, it is much simpler from a cloud provider. For instance, Kubernetes from a provider like Linode. They provide their cloud network load balancers, which they aptly call node balancers, and you can get Kubernetes up and running in just a few clicks, which I'll walk through right now. Once logged into Linode, click on Kubernetes in the left panel. Click on Create Cluster. Give your cluster a name like Authentic. Choose a region closest to you. Choose a Kubernetes version. Choose yes, high availability control pane for production workloads. But since this is a demonstration, I'll choose no. 
The node has all kinds of available servers here, but I'll choose the shared option with three nodes, and click Create Cluster. Now, just wait this process out as Linode provisions the servers. In the meantime, SSH into an available Linux box that you want to be able to control your cluster from. The box can be local or remote, it doesn't matter. We'll first update our repositories and upgrade any packages with sudo apt update y and sudo apt upgrade y. Next, I'll clear my terminal and we want to install kubectl or kubectl on this box. So I'll jump to my install and set up kubectl on Linux resource tab, scroll down to install kubectl binary with curl on Linux, and copy and paste the command into the terminal. Step 2 I'll skip because it is optional to validate the binary. Scroll down to step 3, and copy and paste the command to install kubectl into the terminal. And to test the install and check the client version, copy and paste the command from step 4 into the terminal. And it is successful. I'll clear my terminal and now jump to my Installing Helm resource tab. Scroll down to the Install from Script section and copy and paste each of these command lines into the terminal and hit enter after each line. I'll once again clear my terminal and jump back to my Linode tab to check on my cluster. I see that all my nodes are up. The master control plane is this section up here. We need its configuration file in order to control it. So you can download the YAML file or do like me and view it. Then copy the contents jump back into the terminal and nano kubeconfig.yaml and paste what we just copied. Press Ctrl X, Y to save, and hit enter to close. Next, we want to type the command export kubeconfig in all uppercase equals that config file we just created and hit enter. I'll clear my terminal again and type the command kubectl get nodes dash o wide and hit enter. We see our nodes and have confirmed we now can control the control plane. Clear and type kubectl cluster info and hit enter and we'll see our cluster's info. The address matches what is listed at Linode for the Kubernetes API endpoint. Clear the terminal once more and jump back to the authentic documentation. I won't be generating passwords this time as I will be using the same content of the values.yaml file from the previous demonstration. So if you skip that portion, feel free to jump back to that section of the video. I'll instead start off by copying and pasting each command to install the authentic Helm chart, hitting enter after each line. After executing the last line, we see the status of authentic as deployed. I'll clear the terminal yet again and type the command kubectl get pods and see the status of the containers as creating. While those are creating, I'll jump to my notepad where I have the load balancer file ready to be copy and pasted. But first, we need to update the HTTP port to 80 and HTTPS port to 443 because running in this instance, I will not be using a reverse proxy as it will be directly exposed from the nodes provided public IP addresses. I'll jump back to the terminal and run the get pods command again and see that the authentic server container is not quite ready yet, so I'll give it a little longer. In the meantime, I'll clear the terminal again and instead run the kubectl get services command. As shown, we do not yet have a load balancer service and all these cluster IPs are only accessible from within the cluster. Let me check the pods again. Still not quite ready. Checking again. Great, all pods slash containers are ready. I'll clear my terminal again. I know, I know. I cleared the terminal a lot, but I don't like the display cluttered. Anyways, run nano authentic-services.yaml and copy and paste the load balancer config from notepad. Press Control X, Y to save, and hit enter to close. Running the get services command again will not show the load balancer because the config file has not been applied yet. So to apply it, type the command kubectl apply-f authentic-service.yaml and hit enter. Now, if we run the get services command again, we will see our load balancer service running with an external IP. Clear the terminal. Our authentic server still cannot be reached externally yet because the load balancer is trying to expose any pods with the app label authentic. So let's fix that. Type the command kubectl get pods. Copy the full name of the authentic server pod. Next, type the command kubectl label pod and paste the name we just copied. Space app equal authentic. 
we can confirm it is now labeled by typing the command kubectl get pods dash lapp to filter and show the app column and note the authentic server is indeed labeled. I'll run the get services command once more and copy the external IP into a new browser tab and hit enter. I am greeted with authentic's login page. However, this is not what we want. We want the initial setup page per the documentation. So, if I copy the bit after the ingress host name of the provided URL and just add that to the end of the external IP, the initial setup page will load. I actually want to use my domain name, so I'll open a tab to my domain registrar and create a new A record pointing to the external IP address copied earlier. I'll turn the proxy at Cloudflare off for now because I don't have an SSL certificate installed at Linode for this demo. We'll give these DNS changes a few minutes to propagate. I'll close my browser out to clear out any cache pages and open a new incognito window and navigate to the initial setup URL with my domain name. And the initial setup page loaded successfully, albeit not secure, again because I don't have an SSL certificate set up for this demo. I'll go ahead and register my email and a password and click continue, which logs me in. I can now click on admin interface and configure all the things if I secured this instance with SSL. If you found this video helpful, hit that like, subscribe, and notification button for any future videos I upload. Again, big thanks to the people at Authentic Security Inc. for making this video possible, and thank you for watching.